up everybody i hope you all had a great weekend it is monday march 29th at 2 p.m eastern standard time in sunny beautiful florida in the united states of america i hope that all of you are doing exceptionally well and enjoying this lovely bitcoin bounce that we are seeing today and it feels good because I put a whole videos out last week saying we were going to bounce where we did. So I would hate to uh, have the market make me look stupid as it does roughly 49.5% of the time. Because we all know that technical analysis is kind of a pseudoscience. It's not a real science. And we're all just out here guessing if you're beating 50%, then you are probably crushing it pretty hard, I would say. So yeah, here we are in my normal live stream. I recorded a video that will come out tonight with all of the news. So I will spare you that stuff. And also to discuss my crazy tweet where I said, hey, Bitcoiners and shitcoiners, time to get along. We're all on the same team. Uh, I sent a tweet that said that about three days ago, fired the grenade, pulled the pin, apparently threw it and walked out of the room. I had no idea until like yesterday that it had gone crazy viral and that basically every Bitcoin maximalist on the planet had somehow found that insulting. But uh, I will go through that a little bit later. I completely talked about that. But the point being, when I said we're on the same team, I didn't say that shit coins and Bitcoin. And by the way, shit coins, I didn't mean it as an insult. I think it's an affectionate term to those of us who shit coin. But basically, the point was being like, we're on the same team. We all want to opt out of legacy systems. We all don't want to have exposure to banks. We all want to not have to trade the stock market. We all want to be able to save our money and avoid inflation. But no, 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 that was not how it was taken. And boy, they were angry. The funny thing is that the, the altcoin people didn't really care. I would have expected them to be insulted by shitcoiners. Bitcoin, shitcoin, it just rhymes. It's, it just rhymes, right? I mean, it rhymes. Bitcoiners and altcoiners. Didn't say, oh, Bitcoiner, shitcoiner, bit shit, bit shit. So it sounds better, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, so I was really surprised and a little disheartened, to be honest, at how um, <clears throat> wildly upset they were at the very notion that all of us could work together and towards the same thing. And listen, we're all Bitcoin maximalists a little bit on the inside. Like, I love Bitcoin. That's what, what, what kind of got me when I was thinking about it, it's like, I'm not saying that all these other coins are Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the king. It's superior. If you have to choose one, you choose Bitcoin. But like saying that Bitcoin is the only thing that matters is discounting the fact that like Ethereum is sort of like a future internet and that DeFi, not in its current iteration, but in the future could replace banks. And half the reason people are in crypto is to because they're unbanked or underbanked and they need a better system. You know, like you're not going to, we can get an interest. It's amazing. So anyways, didn't mean to do that here, uh, you know, but I have a much longer uh, thing about that later. Somebody asked how you can request charts. Chart requests are on Wednesdays for members and you just email in response to Wednesday or Tuesday's newsletter. So you just respond to it via email. Super, super easy. Listen, there can be only one. Just kidding. I know you're kidding. Listen, Bitcoin is the king. It drives the market. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, like there's a lot of things that blockchain and crypto can do and a lot of things that uh, they can change in the future. And Bitcoin can't do all of them. Bitcoin is the greatest hard money in history. It's the greatest asset ever invented, period, full stop. But that doesn't mean it can replace your bank. Like we need new systems for things like that. So anyways. We'll, 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 we'll get into that a, another time. So uh, I should first, I, f I forgot to do the YouTube thing. Subscribe and smash. Smash like this one, not this one. Someone always does this one. Oh man, but at the bottom, like, can't we all just like be friends? In the, in the words of Rodney King, can't we all just get along? I mean, like... It's, uh, I don't see, it's us versus them. To have us versus other parts of us is so fucking stupid. And then you drill down from there and then you get into the altcoiners and it's like, they all hate each other. 
Because my, my, my favorite coin, community. My community uh, does, does things better than your community. Nobody gives a shit, y'all. We should just be friends. Just because you're born in Boston doesn't mean you have to be such a pa- passionate Boston Red Sox fan that you beat up every person you see from New York. Sports, politics, coins, religion, it's all just a whole bunch of tribalism. Downvote this man. Guess he doesn't like it. Hey, man, you know what? It is what it is. We can all get rich together or we can all just hate. What do you think about Poodle? I think they're nice dogs. And I also think that I've been getting spammed to death in my Twitter by Poodle bots. And I have no idea what it is. Show me Labradoodle. Anywho, let's add some charts. Let's see. Uh, to be quite honest, I was on calls and I didn't have time to prep that much. So I'm just going to dive in. We're just going to look at shit. This is my newsletter. For all of you um, who ha- are not members, there's this free one right here. Newsletter. See? And then there's this one. $15 a month, five days a week. Objectively... It's not objective. I'm biased. I think it's awesome. You would not be able to imagine how much effort I put into putting this thing out. I'm extremely, extremely proud of it. And I hope that you uh, choose to join because I'm really just, you know, trying to, trying to make it work, trying to help people. Yeah. The Solana was such a good setup. Yeah. It was like the only one that I posted for like three days. And I mentioned it on a live stream after newsletter. And I said, this is my favorite setup right now. And it absolutely went moon and it's funny because you know uh, just as a general concept risk management um we all talk about you know risk management as in like you should never risk more than one percent of your capital on a trade okay that's a very basic risk management maneuver but one of the biggest thing that few people talk about with risk management is not how much you're going to risk on a trade it's when to trade and when to up your risk and when to take no risk. In other words, when to do this, take your hands, put them down below you and just sit on them for a while, right? And sometimes this market is just really crappy to trade, especially the altcoin market and Bitcoin. When you're sideways and nothing's happening and one coin's popping, but others are going down, it's just not a good time. You have to have the patience and know when not to trade. So as much as I get a, some pushback from a few members who are like, we want setups, we want 20 altcoins set up today, I'm not going to shill a bunch of setups when the market looks like poodle doodle, as you people would say. It looks like poodle crap, but it doesn't anymore. This thing looks kind of like a poodle. It's a clip for an iPhone. Just happened to be sitting there. I was playing with it because I have a debilitating attention deficit disorder. All right, let's look at um, the corn. The corn that is bit. The one coin to rule them all. I admit it. I love it. I'm like 85% maximalist. Why y'all mad? Okay, so here's our MAs. 50, 200. I sent a tweet out that was much maligned as well that said right here that Bitcoin was playing just the tip with the 50 MA, a game that many high schoolers have come accustomed to begrudgingly playing. Well, it got the full release, right? Bounce off the 50 MA, massive bullish engulfing candle of both of these and continued upward movement. That looks really good. Testing the 200 would have been a shame, 28,486. But you can see that we're never that, I mean, this is a huge gap between the two MAs. We're never that far below the 50, except for this one few days, you know, here in March, which was Black Swan event. But we hugged the 50 pretty good. So I would not expect a test of the 200 when there's a gap this large between the two of them. Let's see what else we got here. I think I have a better four hour chart here. Yeah. So here's the four hour with the same idea. This is where I was saying, hey, it looks like we bottomed here. Perfect tap into demand. I said, but we need to get above the 200. We did also flip the 50. And look at this one, one, two, three, four, five tests of the 50 MA on the four hour and then a break. Then if you're looking at here on the candle chart, I like that line a little better. Let me fix that. We have a breakout on increased volume, although we have selling volume after and presently retesting. We really like to see this hold this line at this point. 
right? But that's a nice break on double volume of any of these candles. Bouncing, popping the candle before off the 50, breaking resistance, and theoretically holding there above. And if we look at a similar line, let's look at it on the hourly, I mean, on the daily again. We really would love to see this close above that line and be a confirmation instead of a rejection, right? But I mean, it was looking pretty good. And when you drill it in on the line chart, I posted this quite a few times. The hourly was a very, very clear bull flag, although clearly this has gotten, oh, as you stretch it out, you can see. With significant oversold bullish divergence, popped resistance here, flip the EQ, consolidate under and head up. So don't be surprised if we drop down in like the 56s to retest this. But this is beautiful. No bearish divergence on the hourly with all that. So if we measure the flag pole from here, right? And you could also, by the way, come down to here and you could call that the flag pole. This takes us just on this measured move to 71,748. I don't know, man. They say you're crazy when you say big numbers, big numbers. Look at me. My numbers are big, but I, yeah, why not? I don't really give a shit. Bitcoin's going to six figures. It's probably going to seven figures. There's absolutely no stopping this train. So have fun caring what happens between, I don't know, 60 something and 50 or high 40s or low 70s. It doesn't matter. We all know where Bitcoin's going, right? I mean, let's look at the six hour. Oh, there's bullish divergence. There it was. That was the bottom. Funny how that works. Have fun staying consistent with a great indicator like a bullish divergence on RSI and price. But I, I mean, I really genuinely believe that Bitcoin's going to hit those prices and I'm, it's not really that much in question in my mind. I mean, think about all this big money that's about to pour into the space. Interestingly, I had my first podcast conversation today ever with a miner. It's funny. I had never, for some reason, had a miner on the show. Um, it was, uh, I want to, his name's Peter Wall. He's the CEO of Argo. But I keep wanting to call him Paul Wall. Like the rapper from Texas. He's friends with Mike Jones. Paul Wall, baby. Uh, but Peter Wall. And it was a really interesting conversation, but I can just say that when, okay, when I talk to miners, exchange heads, who by the way, make money, whether it goes up or not, bankers, literally anyone in this space, every one of them is like, bruh, like I can't tell you who, I can't tell you what, but yo, yo, I got some inside information. There's some big money coming, big things happening. And every single one of them like, so hey, what inning are we in in the baseball game? And they're like, bruh. We're like two outs into the top of the first. Um, minor, say so like minor, get it, get it, minor joke. I was talking to a minor, like a young person. It's funny. I see you guys. And Emmy has clarified. I, I see minor, not minor. Thank you. Um, but he was like. <laughs> This thing is going so high. He was like, I don't want to make predictions. I don't like talking about cycles. I don't like talking about any of that. He's like, let's just say this. We're not selling any. We haven't sold a single Bitcoin in 2021. Argo, one of the biggest miners in the world, they've not sold a single Bitcoin. And I asked him about miner selling and miner pressure. And he says, largely miners are not selling. And that is not who's responsible for the gyps, as we see, he's like, miners are generally holding unless they're running just really bad businesses. He was like, we, not only that, Argo was so bullish. They raised capital this year just to make sure they were cash, uh, cash, cash rich. And then not only have they not sold Bitcoin to fund their operation, they bought more Bitcoin with the cash that they raised. Don't be bearish on Bitcoin. Listen, anything can happen. Price can go down. It could go to zero, bro. None of that matters. The smart money and the best bet is to be exceptionally, irresponsibly, borderline, mentally handicappedly long Bitcoin. Yeah, it's got to be long. Got to be long. 
Ah, they're still talking about Poodle. Okay, now I want to talk about Ethereum because, wow. Wow, I'm going to mute you guys for a minute so I can drink this. Poodles. Why is it called Poodle, though? It's kind of dumb. It's kind of dumb. Pitbull token. Rottweiler token. German Shepherd token. Doberman Pinscher token. Poodle token. They're hypoallergenic, and you can breed them with anything and make a hypoallergenic lab. What does this Poodle token do? Lick you until you... Slap it out of the way because it's annoying. I don't know. Pood poodles are fine. Poodles are fine. I'm sure your token is great, but like, whatever. Let's talk about ETH. Okay. Ooh, I didn't talk about this on Bitcoin real quick. Because I pointed this out on the live stream and I told you guys, it's really cool to draw patterns on your indicators. See, that's the RSI resistance that lines up with this resistance, right? And look, this broke out here a candle before and it told us hey this shit is about to break out on price as well you can use that all the time i've used it so many times newsletter subscribers know about that but let's look at eth look Ooh, wow you know what i can even make that tighter peaking this is the daily you want to see it close above right you can realize this will continue to that was an alert I had set on our side. This will continue to move throughout the day. So it could close literally all the way up down here, up here, whatever. But we want to see the daily close like that. Now we have a huge bull pennant on the USD pair. So if this breaks out, it's probably telling us the price is going to do the same thing. And like, let's be real, y'all. Let's be really real. This was the previous all-time high. This is where I said, hey, buy Ethereum when price was up here. It dropped all the way in. Yeah, it wicked below, but it's held this support from the previous all-time high. That's super bullish. I'm going to trigger some more Bitcoin maxis by saying that Ethereum looks good, but it looks fucking great. This looks great. Who cares if it consolidates? It's only been a month. Have some patience, man. I think Ethereum is going to like 10,000. 10,000. Why not? 5X? I eat pieces of shit like that for breakfast. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? Happy Gilmore. Um, and let's look at the Ethereum Bitcoin pair. Breakout, as I said, SFP, all retest as support. And now we have a candle that is presently engulfing the previous three candles and holding this support. Like if you drew a support right here, you'd have an epic support. One, two, three, four, five candles. This looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Um, yeah, my coin on Blitcloud, Bitcloud is 2.2K. I can't touch it. I can't touch it. I can only tweet about like three to four percent of the things that I want to tweet about once I cross like a hundred, 150,000 Twitter followers. It's just not worth it. That's why people are always like, Hey man, you know, these big accounts, they just become like inspirational speakers and they tweet like vanilla stuff. Yeah. Well, of course, because if you tweet anything, you trigger literally someone who then gets in your DMS and tells you they're coming after your family. Shooter McGavin. So yeah, like you don't tweet about everything. I again, I'm not touching BitClout right now. It's cool that it's that it's actually like I could claim it and make probably tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in coins. I'm just not doing it right now. I'm sure I will eventually. There's a lot of big money behind it. A lot of my friends really love it, but everyone's out there screaming about scams. Ooh, I, I don't know if anyone can make an account. I just know that for like bigger accounts, they created the account for you and you can go claim it. So I'm sure it's amazing. I'm sure it's great. Just not in the mood for any more drama in my life. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Ethereum looks really good here. Let's zoom into the four hours, see what it looks like. I mean, yeah, this looks really good. I like it. Buy some Ethereum. I'd buy some Ethereum. That's viable. But then you get over to Litecoin. Oh, yeah, it actually went up a little bit today. That's cute. Like 10 bucks. No, it still looks like trash on this pair. 
let's see, if you want to like look for an entry, maybe on Litecoin, you could do this thing and hope that closes above. Maybe this is reversing. That's a nice little spinning top there. Everyone likes a little spinning top, a little spinner. Um, I see, want to see some follow through. I'd really like to be back above that blue line. Let's look at it here. I don't know, man. This is still, like, I'm sure this is going to moon because all coins look good. But, like, even though it's kind of steep, we'll see if it closes above that. But that's kind of head and shoulders, is he, right? Although there's no volume on the breakdown, so I don't count it. Doesn't matter. Let's, let's call that irrelevant. I mean, it's all right. I think Litecoin looks fine kind of above here on the USD pair. Kind of choppy through that line, but that's fine. I don't know, man. It's going to bounce eventually. This is just a really wrecked chart to break this so this trading range completely. I can't believe a Scott Melker coin is $2,200. People have got to have better things to do with their time than that. I wouldn't buy me. Uh... Crazy like a fox or a wolf. Thank you, Walid. I am weird. No, there's plenty of crypto Twitter alpha for me. I still share it. I'm just saying you like when you fire, when you get to a certain point, every tweet you fire, you almost have to like mute your own tweet conversation because you know it's just going to be any amount of absolute mayhem. So... This guy is a Litecoin maxi. That's good for you. Hmm. How many time frames do you look at before making a trade? Usually one. I mean, I'll go look for confluence. I'm such a simple trader. I tell you guys, like I've been through every complex system. I've tried every indicator. I've done it all through time. And now you guys see how I chart. Like I know it, maybe it gets boring and consistent. I draw a couple lines and whatever time frame I'm looking at, if it seems to trigger the trade, I'll take it and call it, call it a day. You know what I mean, thank you. I think you're cool too, Thomas Norman 23. The check is in the mail. Thank you for the compliment. Um, yeah, so this is another important point. The anxiety in the space is real if your coins haven't been popping like others. Yeah, just wait. Just wait. Like comparing whatever you're trading, that's a very unique actually to crypto thing when you think about it. Like if you're invested in Amazon stock and like tech stock Q that has nothing to do with Amazon is just popping off in the stock market, you don't go, God damn it. Wish I wasn't holding Amazon. You know, like, oh, my Google isn't moving. I need to flip to Tesla. It's so very unique here because like well, your altcoin not moving has nothing to do with the fact that some other altcoin is moving because that implies that you would literally always be in the best coin at all times, which you're just never going to be, right? Um, how big in percentage of portfolio is one trade for you to manage risk? Between one and 2%. But listen, if it's like, if the setup is so crazy, listen, I didn't even take Solana. I'm an American. I don't even know if I can trade it, but I would have put, I would have taken like four, three, four percent risk on that setup because I liked it so much. But generally one to two percent. But what's funny is then people will be like, oh man, I got wrecked. I had like a oh, 2% stop loss on my trade, but I, uh, but like I'm way down. And like, what happened? I'm like, well, I have 20 trades. If you have 20 altcoin trades open, each with 2% risk and Bitcoin sneezes on your altcoins, you're going to basically lose, what did I say, 20? You're going to be like 40% of your portfolio. I'm sure I can trade Solana, probably on Uniswap or something. I don't know, whatever. Just didn't take it. I don't, you guys, I, I, most of what I'm doing is analysis for you guys. As good as it is, like, I got to be in the mood to trade. I got to be in the mode to trade. And these days, the portfolio goes up so much without even having to trade. So I don't trade that much. Oh, whatever. If I, if I miss it, I miss it. But like, do I seem like I have FOMO? I'm literally the one who posted the setup and I didn't take it and it went way up. And I'm just happy that some people made money. I don't care. Don't care. Um, guys, so much so much poodle. Stop. Nobody cares. Except for the three of you talking about poodle. 
This is this is, you you don't you don't generally help your cause by harping on it. I'm not I'm sure poodle's awesome. But like I don't want to check it out when 900 people are screaming about it. I feel like there's a bunch of bots. I don't know why I'm looking at uni. That doesn't look great. It's fine. Maybe break above that. Goes back up. Um dusk. This looks real good. Real good. <clears throat> I'll tell you why. Okay. So I have a bull flag, but not quite a technically perfect bull flag. Why? We have two touches down. Great. We have three touches up. Great. So you'd think that's a confirmed bull flag. Uh, technically, I don't really care. But if you're a rule maximalist, you got to go up, down. This doesn't count. Up and back down. You need You need alternating taps up and down. But that doesn't change the fact that this is a key resistance, right? And it broke. And not only did it break, look at the volume on that break. It's the biggest four-hour candle we can see in March. That's a good sign. And then what happened? Look at this. I mean, yeah, missed by a sat, maybe the retest, one sat. So listen, maybe this comes back down and retest. Maybe it comes all the way back down to here. I don't know. But this, if you're patient, even if it happens over here or even over here, the target of what just happened is 929 sets. Might never get there. Might go 927, and then you'll come back screaming, Scott, you suck. You didn't even hit your target. Patterns don't hit their targets because this isn't math. It's not science. We're drawing pretty pictures. And we're hoping that some other traders somewhere else who are placing their orders are looking at the same pretty pictures as us because then they'll place their orders and then our charts will become a self-fulfilling prophecy and it will work. But like Mercury's retrograde is not in line with Saturn's liquidity of the Fibonacci sequences and the leaves on the sand. And that's why the thing, come on, come on, come on, y'all, please. Please, it hurts my brain. That is dusk. Dusk. Sorry, I got tiny words, man. Micro words. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, yeah, man. You know, like we, we use charts because other people use charts. We watch levels because other people watch levels. Support and resistance work because algorithms and bots put their orders on support and resistance. That's what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me see what we got here. Somebody asking for TVK. I'm actually interested because I've been in TVK since, I don't know, dinosaurs. This is TVK Buzdi, Binance, US dollar. Um, looks pretty cool. Like even if you shift this up here, it still looks good, right? And that's actually probably better. Nice breakout, little increased volume up, going up, consolidating. Oh, this looks good. I think it should be eventually visiting a dollar twenty four again on the break of this descending wedge. Descending wedge is not a bull flag. It's a descending wedge, and the pat the the target is generally the beginning of the wedge. So. Right up there. I think that looks pretty good. I wanted to look at the dollar because I haven't today. Oh, stonks must be getting wrecked. I haven't even looked. Are stonks getting wrecked? You know, the dollar is breaking out. It's kind of pissing me off. Nobody wants the dollar to do well. Why is the dollar doing well? It's funny because I know that people have the impression that I'm like a wild lefty. Because I actually thought people should wear masks at the beginning of COVID. Sorry. Sorry. Science and all. But like they're going to print. Both parties print. So it's really not a uh, political thing. But like $1.9 trillion in stimulus. $3 trillion for interest, infrastructure. And they just said today they're going to do another stimulus in April. I don't feel stimulated. That's a lie. I generally feel stimulated. But. Like, who's paying for that shit? And if you do the math, I talked to Richard Byworth, the CEO of Equus. That's coming out actually tomorrow on my podcast with him. Was it him? No, it was Mark Yusko, which will come out next week. I was talking to Mark Yusko on Friday. 
And he said, hey, let's do the math, you know, $1,400 check, whatever it is. He was like, by 50% of the American population, and then you have to eliminate kids and the people that are whatever. He was like, basically, it's three. And we talked about this last year, a year ago, same thing. $300 billion is going to stimulus, and it's a $1.9 trillion package. Where is the other $1.6 trillion going? And then three trillion more for infrastructure. I don't know, man. I know we need train stations and high speed rail and all that stuff, but like our roads are kind of fine. We got some potholes. What he said, you know, what Mark Yusko said, he said, you know, where we should spend that money if we're going to throw it at something? He's like, not at like private contractors who will waste all the money and put it in their pockets and not even build that bridge. We should put it into Head Start, which teaches people to read when they're kids. And he told me that there is no better indicator, science this fact, of whether you'll end up in jail than second grade, whether you can read in second grade. And he said the single best thing that could improve our society would be to make sure everybody can read by the time they're in second grade. It's the greatest predictor of people ending up in jail. So maybe put, uh, put some money into that. Yeah. Um, so... You know, listen, it's sad. And I think uh, I think it's hard to they're gonna do three more trillion infrastructure, another one point nine trillion, just devalue it. If you can't be bullish on Bitcoin and 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 understand why it's so important, I got nothing left for you. Uh but yeah, the dollar nonetheless looking pretty good here, breaking through this whole key area and breaking through supply. So I would like to see this go down. That'd be good for all the other assets and also like dollars. Cash is trash. Shouldn't be gaining value. What is this? I don't know. Literally, I just pulled up the first like 10 charts that I could auto load. So this is Adam. Have you met my friend Adam? There was something. I think there was another bullish divergence here that I saw, but I think it might have failed. Where is that? Here? No, it was like a little, I don't know. Um, but this looks fine. Looks fine. Don't see any reason to, maybe we draw this now. You get really excited if it breaks that. But uh, I know I've had like 10 people ask me about e-gold. So here you go. It looks great. Broke out, almost came down, retested, heading up today. And now potentially another reversal cam cancel to the upside. I think gold looks fine. I am a, I have make no qualms about admitting that I use my R. I love e gold. I've been on this since Elrond was 15 sats and went to 300 sats. Then I sold a bunch. And then I got back in e gold about $10. And that's been a saga well documented in my newsletter. I have had Benjamin Minch, uh, Minku, the CEO, I had him on my podcast. Then I did an AMA with him because I just think the guy is fucking brilliant. I like, you know, this happens to me a lot. Like I'm kind of a homer. Like I, you know, I'm very easily swayed by people that are passionate and seem smart and I buy into their stuff. I can't tell you how many people I've had as guests on the newsletter, uh, on the podcast. I didn't really know that much about. And then I ended up buying their coin or investing in their stuff. Happened recently with Sovereign. I had Adon Yago on the show. I was like, God, this dude is brilliant. DeFi on Bitcoin. I love it. I asked him if I can invest in Sovereign, and I invest in Sovereign. I think now Pomp is trying to invest $10 million, his raised $10 million to invest in that. But yeah. Hey, guys, they're still talking about Poodle, in case you're wondering. Um, I, I, I'm sure it's amazing. I'm just pretty sure that the coin that changes the world is not going to be the one named after the world's second most annoying dog, only after a chihuahua. Uh, I use log scale for everything. I believe that um, the percentage move is much more important than the move itself in, in exact dollar terms. Like Bitcoin going from 1,000 to 2,000 is a $1,000 move. Bitcoin going from 57 to 56 to 58,000 is a $1,000 move. One of them is a fractional percentage. The other one is doubling. Log scale reflects that percentage. So it's more important. Um, I have seen PNT. I am staking PNT since it launched. See, 
I'm just a homer. I had uh, had their CEO, Thomas Tomas, on my podcast, and I bought some PNT, P Network. It's really that simple. I'm easily swayed, guys. Do I think BNB can overthrow ETH? I don't know. Let's look at BNB. The answer is no, because they're different. Pancake, that's not the chart I want. Pancake swap is uh, is centralized. You know, I'm not saying it's bad or good, but it's not the same thing as Ethereum. BNB is not a world computer like Ethereum. It's not a platform. BNB is a utility token. And its utility happens to be for gas fees on pancake swap, fees on the on on Binance and such. I love Binance. I think it's amazing, but that's that's a false equivalency in my mind. Yeah, I don't think I don't even think that anyone who works at Binance would tell you that BNB is trying to replace Ethereum. It's not a platform. BNB looks good here, right? Risky because of this little. Let's let you take that out so you can see it better. But yeah, it broke resistance. Is retesting. It's failing. It's a little below. A little scary. But I maybe put stops down here below this one if I was going to trade it, like down here. So like, here's your demand. A few places, right? You could put stops here. Uh, so I would make sure, because you know it's going to wick down, right? So I'd put my stops down here far enough below it. Okay. But honestly, if I was trading this right now, I'm trying to look for this to hold. So I'd put my stops like here probably. Not even mess with any of this because like you're looking for this. to. If, if your premise is the breakout of this red line and then maybe this demand is a retest, you don't really want to be lower than like down here, right? But I think BNB looks pretty good here. And this is against Bitcoin. So it probably looks great on the USDT pair since, I don't know, Bitcoin went up. That's what happens. You get a real raging Jimmy for every altcoin against the USDT pair when Bitcoin is going up. But no, I don't think it's going to overthrow ETH. I think that there's room for everyone. Can't we all just get along? Can't we all just get along? Yeah. Yeah, I think BNB is fine. Uh, I don't even know what else I've pulled up here or why. We're just going to look. UTK still looks so good to me. You trust this rounding. I think this is going to just blast soon. Hopeful. But hey, man, I, I hold this. So I hope that I'll be able to, I would be looking for a break of that or this. I want to be above 1189 if I'm trading that. That's pretty simple. Everyone's talking about origin. So I pulled it up. It was like in my comments like nine times. I have not looked at it, but yeah, it looks real bullish. Right. Because, I mean, I'm loving these rounding bottoms lately. I tell y'all. Hmm. Everybody loves a rounding bottom. Apple bottom jeans. Boots with the fur. The whole club is looking at her. She hit the flow. There's nothing you know, so yeah, low, 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 low. Baggy sweatpants. Reboss with the strap. Right. Um, yeah, this looks good. I want to see it hold 2533 if I was a bull. So like right now, if you feel like you quote unquote missed it, just place some bids here. It'll do this. I'll go up to here. That was a really good line. I don't draw straight with a mouse. Oh, low, 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 low. A bunch of people asked for Ren too. Wow, what a giving opportunity. This was the last Ren trade. I'd put that here and it hit it right in it. 1560 to 3369. So you got to double it and do the exact same thing again. This will go back up, I think. The exact same thing again. Look at that. Exact same thing again. You got the same entry and now you can target up here again. It's like free money. That's great. Let's go to go on Binance and look for some more trades myself. This is what I'll kind of do. Like I don't even trade on Binance, so this is for you guys. But I like to go in, go into the spot market, Bitcoin market, see what's popping. Metal. Dang. But I don't want to buy any of that popping stuff. I want the stuff that like just is like flat, hasn't moved. Look at sushi. I haven't looked at sushi in a while. Yeah, it's Bitcoin. See, look, sushi right here. Got decent volume. 
That's volume, right? Good 24 hour volume hasn't moved a stitch. I'm kind of getting wrecked, just ranging. So, yeah, I'm not interested in it right there. But hey, we looked, we tried, we tried, guys. Tried. What else is kind of in the Middle East? Everyone's been talking about Luna. Let's look at Luna and Dia. Those are both right there. Luna. Yeah. Luna is still just ranging. Yeah, these are boring coins. That's what's happening. Ooh, what a rejection. I don't even think this line matters anymore. But yeah, you want to get... <laughs> clearly, this is the range high, right? I would actually maybe pull that to here. I like that better. Because that's the move up, then down. And look at that. Bottom. Slight SFP back to the EQ. This is like I uh, talk about it all the time. This is why ranges are interesting, right? Price loves to travel in channels, whether sideways, up, down. That's why we see bull flags, ascending channels, descending channels. It just is what happens, you know, because nature and butterflies, unicorns, whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, you pull them and you see these moves around the EQ. You know, so we go up, down, all the way back up. Bearish SFB, bearish SFB, bearish SFB, drop. Perfect resistance at the EQ. Bullish SFB, struggles at the EQ. Back to the bottom. Perfect touch. Breaks through, back to the EQ. Right. You can't, I mean, I couldn't, you, you could maybe consider a trade here. I would, the trade you want now is you want to see a close here and then a retest. Because look how many times you would have gotten faked out. Five, one, two, three, four, five. You could even call this one almost a six times. You've been faked out trying to trade the breakout of the range. That's why you wait for a confirmation above. Luna's doing nothing. I don't know. Oh, yeah, at Eternity. This thing is just out of control. One of the best things I've ever traded. You got to break that now. If that doesn't happen, I'd be looking for probably around here. Uh, maybe here, 50-ish, you know? If you can buy this around 50, get it. But there's another one, newsletter, many, many multiples. Many multiples. And I pulled up another one, APY swap that I was watching because it looked kind of like that same sort of pattern. I like high, you know, kind of rounding. It leveled up here. Low, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. Now a higher, high. Maybe you come down somewhere in here if you can get it. This is a bit of an ascending wedge right here. But so now I would, you know, I just think that uh, you see it as something that's moving like that. You just say, hey, man, dips are for buying and you do it. Maybe here. Here. Your bias is towards the furthest right. Yeah, like something through here. Doesn't You know, these aren't exact. These are Uniswap. People can't place stops, can't place sitting orders. So it makes the charts a little harder to use, frankly. Yeah, if you get either of those areas, whatever. And then ultimately the safest entry now is a break above this and whatever. But this looks really good. It's, you know, did that little bot thing, but it's steadily gone up since then. That's what we like to see. I'm coming back to the chat. I'll see what's happening. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Are you in jail? We could do a statistical analysis. Yeah, I don't use dark mode on purpose. That's Dex tools, not trading view. It's you can't chart a lot of these coins properly on trading view, so I have to pull up Dex tools. I would never do that if I had a chance. Dude, stop. Stop. Doodle token. Yeah, I've got some staked. Yes, tones are coming. Cool. Mana looked bananas. I'll take a look at that. Mana, please, sir. Please, sir. Me. Yeah, well, yeah, it's real good. I mean, okay, so this is a mixed message. I still want to buy it here, to be honest. This is a key resistance, and this is the highest weekly close in the history of mana, right? Even with all these wicks, that was the highest. This whole area, I don't know, daily... 
I drew that, uh, drew it on the weekly, but this whole area is obviously support resistance. You're retesting it. I could see you buying it here, but this, and it's a weekly, so it's hard to gauge, but these are tweezer tops. We're, it's only Monday. Can't even care. But like these are tweezer tops and this is a pretty ugly candle for the moment. And the daily is going to be the same. But maybe drilling into the daily, you say, hey, look, look, mom, retest. I'm indifferent, but technically it looks kind of fine. You know? Um, my YouTube guy just sent me a link like, and my video's up, I think, and I'm, I'm here. But I can't look at that at the same time. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's kind of a retest there. Looks pretty good. Let's see what else you guys got for me. VGX hasn't moved except for that it's up like a gajillion thousand percent like in the last two months. I I literally just to like get the 1% bonus, totally transparent. I should have been in Voyager. Like I wasn't trading it and then I had BQX and I was off and whatever ages ago. You had to have 10,000 coins, which was like two or three thousand dollars. So I just bought it to get the interest boost and it went up to like 70 something grand in like a couple weeks. So yeah, see, that's the thing. Voyager hasn't moved for you, but it's up literally like 10 thousands of percent. Patience, my friend. Patience. I don't have a take on render. Watch 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 take on render. It's cool, man. They render files really fast. I've never looked at the coin in my life. I'm going to mute you. You, my friend, are getting put in time out. Mmm. Got treated like one of my kids. Except for they come out of timeout before I tell them, and you can't. You're really nice. I don't even know really what OBTC is, or, but I wouldn't buy any of them right now. There's probably an ETF coming. Um. So yeah. Okay, dude. I'm. I'm I love you. Are very kind, nice person. I'm. I'm timing you out though. Oh, you're on. I can't even do it. He's not on YouTube. He's going wild on uh, on Periscope over there. I, I don't know what that coin is. I'm sorry. Um, yes, I've looked at Super and it only goes up, apparently. Easy ETH. I haven't looked at that. And I will look at it only because it sounds like Easy E and I get to make rap jokes. Easy E. The boys in the hood are always hard. I'm talking that trash. We'll pull your car. Want nothing in life but to be legit. Don't quote me, boy, because I ain't said shit. <laughs> This looks fine. Looks great. Broke out of that. That was something we had. That was a setup, I think. It looks fine. Mm. What other, you guys, the interactive, easy E, easy ETH. Show me some other rap name, coin names. See who can say something clever. Like Dr. Drip. Hmm. I'm sure you'll have all kinds of poodle jokes about Snoop Dogg. Guys, stop writing the same thing a million times. My God, I'm trying to read these comments. Drop it like it's hot. Right. Lincoln Park. LinkedIn Park, I kind of like better as a social media platform. YFII. I have not looked at that for God, I don't even know how long. Let's see. Nobody asks me about YFI or YFI anymore. Is it bottomed? I don't know. Look at all these lines of things that were never meant. I'm just going to erase everything. I think this matters. And there's your resistance. So no, I can't say it's bottomed if it's at resistance and can't break above. I don't know. Can't see a reason to get really excited about this. But it is moving a bit right now. So maybe if it breaks through this, you can take a shot at it and think that it's a bottom, but it's generally a knife catch, I would say. Um, 
Yeah. Death Row coin, is that a coin or are you just like saying rap stuff? EPMD coin. See my rap joke? Trap Call Quest coin. I don't know. Um, the Notorious BTC. Right? What is the Notorious BTC doing right now? Just kind of chilling. Easy ETH is good though. Um, but yeah, I got a lot of stuff I gotta do. And um, oh, someone, this is a C. This is actually kind of funny, but now I can't find him. What are you smoking if you're not charting theta? I'm gonna chart theta because that's a better way to request it. I don't want people to think that I'm smoking. Theta looks fine, it's consolidating. It hasn't changed since the last three times people asked me to look at it, probably, but hey, whatever, man. Here you go. Mm -mm, something like this. What do I say about penance, though, people? What happens with a penance? Penance tend to break support and do this. Mm. So this is what we are looking at. And it may just break out of here and go up. That'd be great. But it also may trickle down here, form a bull flag. You stop out here and then it goes like that because the market wants your money. It looks great. It's in a big old bull pennant. And I'm not smoking, bruh. <sighs> yep, break right down the bull flag. Break right down the bull flag. Bit behind the stream about reading in jail. Yes, they do want people in jail. It's a private private business. M and Eng. That's good. That is good. That's good. I like that. Uh, Cardano. Why not? And then I'm gonna exit the building probably because uh, I don't know. I got a life. That's not my ADA chart. Once again. I need to label my charts better. I just come up with dumb names. It's at resistance. Um, just don't want it to break down that line. I don't think it will. I was just, that was, I was not saying that was a head and shoulders. I was giving an example as a teaching moment last time about what would happen if it was head and shoulders. Although it does look head and shouldersy, so you do not want to break down this line. I don't know. It's a tough one. It looks kind of toppy, but could break out. Don't have any great insight into that. Um, BNB Dance Factory. CNC, CNC Dance Factory. BNB Dance Factory. It's clever. That's clever. That's clever. Um, Anchor is popping right now. Let's see if it actually is, or if you're just clickbaiting me, I'm going to be very upset with you and put you in timeout. If it's not, holy shit, it is. Dang. Kind of looks like a blow off top. That's a busted ass daily candle. My God. If this daily candle closes red, you just start looking for lower. I don't know where though. Mm, it's at re it's at support. Hmm. These are hard, man. When you get a candle like that, a wick, it's very hard to find a place, but this could be support. I wouldn't touch it after that move personally. Yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, feeling done. Um, God, I, I want to, I want to knock this guy off so bad and block him. He's a, I mean, you're a wonderful person, AG Paradox, but my God, with the poodle. But I can't. You're on a tele, 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 para, para telescope. Soul. Oh, yeah, we'll look at Soul before I go because this is the setup I was talking about. But it did like a 50% move already. I don't know. I said like 10 times, this is my favorite setup right here. I'm coming down. It tested the 50 MA demand and this descending support at the same time. So your entry was around 238 and it went to 351. Pretty good. Still looks good. Still looks great. Enjoy yourself. Guys. Oh, that's not a rap name, but that is funny. That, that is funny. 
Um, love you guys, but it's time for me to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Do, 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 do. I hate to leave you, but I really must say. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.